The chances are, if you've watched something on TV made in the last 12 months, or even a live production from a house of worship to gardening to cookery programs, it would have involved a high level of remote production, and that would almost certainly have included a few PTZ cameras, which in case you don't know, can be remotely controlled to pan, tilt and zoom, ensuring the camera operator is both socially distanced and located more or less anywhere they want to be. Yeah, so today we're talking about the role of PTZs in production workflows, the benefits of auto tracking, and probably a lot more, we hope, with our guest Paul Richards from PTZ Optics. Welcome to the show, Paul. So let's start with a quick overview of uh, PTZ Optics. Uh, what do you do? What makes you guys different? Well, Simon, Matt, thank you for having me on. Uh, my name is Paul Richards. I'm with PTZ Optics, and we really do focus on one thing, pan, tilt, zoom cameras. Robotic cameras are really changing the game in video production, allowing a single camera operator to uh, operate multiple cameras from small to medium-sized venues who can now afford to put in high-quality video production systems on a lower budget to higher-end television productions who are now being forced to use pan tilt zoom cameras to reduce crew sizes and the like. So um, it's been a great experience and we've got a lot of great products in the pan tilt zoom uh, space. Cool. So as we said in the intro, Paul, PTZ cameras are becoming more common in production workflows of all sorts. Can you tell us how they're being used in the various types of production that you've seen so far? Well, the great thing about pan tilt zoom cameras is that they're built into a lot of video production software. So right now I have uh, full control of my all like about 12 PTZ cameras right here in my video production studio using vMix. Uh, but the list goes on and on with uh, pan tilt zoom cameras being integrated directly into video production software, whether it's Wirecast, the TriCaster, um, vMix, even OBS, which is enabling millions and millions of folks to mm. uh, use pan tilt zoom cameras directly in the software that they're already using. But at its core level, it combines robotics with optical zoom. So the ability to have two or three cameras provide 10, 20, 30 different angles and shots for a production reduces the budget. It increases what you're capable of doing. And they can be discreetly mounted in a variety of locations, which are ideal for houses of worship, where you don't really want to have a, a, a human on a tripod in the middle of a worship sanctuary, but also in many different places where cameramen just simply can't fit. And today, with the current pandemic, you know, that's become more and more important. Yeah, I guess that is reflected in crew sizes. There's been an increase in remote production because of uh, yeah, the pandemic has reduced crew sizes. Full stop. Um, uh, you know. Interesting. How do you see PTZ cameras fitting into this in the long run, not only in those places where cameramen were never appropriate? Well, there's been a massive growth in live streaming uh, over the past few years, but just overall yeah. year over year. And we should expect that to continue. And that actually increases the need for camera operators. So what's happening simultaneously is there's more, there's a greater need for live streaming. There's a greater need for video production. And at the same time, robotic cameras are allowing video producers, a single producer, to operate multiple cameras. We're even seeing in the future, and, and right yeah. now, I even have an auto tracking camera here. So we're seeing cameras that can actually pan, tilt, and zoom themselves. This is one, the Huddle Cam HD Simple Track 2, but increased automation, artificial intelligence and uh, actually just allowing smaller crews to do a heck of a lot more than they were used to in the past. So in terms of auto tracking, I mean, I find them really fascinating. Um, I mean, how are they being used? Are they effectively replacing a camera operator now? And what, you know, what benefits do they bring to productions? Yeah, so uh, in this studio here, uh, we actually have two auto tracking cameras. And uh, essentially, the way we're using them is similar to the way we're seeing them used in, in houses of worship, in um, presentation spaces. So we actually have two of them. And uh, in this specific area here, this is a simple track two oh, yeah. on a pole mount that's out a little further because our, our LED lights, it kind of needs to go around. And then behind it, you can see we have another one. So in this scenario, we're using two auto tracking cameras in combination with you can see here, this is the PTZ Optics 20X SDI 
just a regular PTZ camera. So the regular PTZ cameras are, you could say, manually controlled. There's usually one operator here, and that's very common now because like with vMix, you click, you can operate six or seven cameras. You yeah. don't really only need one. Or maybe a secondary operator with a joystick. Manual control is still great. But getting to your question about the automatic camera tracking, what it allows the producer to do as the video producer is doing their job is to have that one camera that's always following the talent. So you can cut to that camera. It adds motion. It adds tracking. It makes it more engaging for the viewers. Yeah. And then you cut back to a static shot, a wide shot. You move the PTZ cameras around as needed. But to always have that automatically tracking camera, it reduces the need to have a, a full-time person operating a joystick. So in terms of the auto tracking option, is that an option? Uh, can you retrofit it to existing PTZ cameras? That is a great question. So um, the HuddleCam HD Simple Track 2 has auto tracking built in. Just to kind of high level what that is, is that there's an, a reference camera Okay, right here, yeah. it's a wide angle, high resolution camera that can see the whole space. And it uses this camera with a combination of motion tracking and facial tracking, which is important because motion will go left to right uh, and follow the person. But the yeah. facial tracking actually can tell the difference between, you know, a, a soccer ball or, or a human with, with two eyes and nose and a mouth. Regarding, right. you know, really some yeah. of the most popular uh, PTZ cameras on in the industry do not currently have auto tracking built in. There's no reference camera to be used yet. There is software coming out actually from the UK. I'm not sure if you know about Martin Roberts uh, control, but yeah. they actually have uh, they use um, the actual image off of a camera like a PTZ optics camera. And they're able to use higher end computers and servers to do the auto tracking based on just that one camera, which is complicated to be able to do. Um, but we've seen it. It, it. It's still really, really bleeding edge. It's expensive and it's, it's kind of, there's still some bugs in that software without using the two camera system. From my own personal experience, they're getting a lot better and it's about to become the new standard, which will, which will reduce costs for everyone. Um, so right now, the best product on the market that I've seen uses two cameras, a reference camera and then a high optical zoom, pan zoom uh, camera like the Huddle Cam HD Simple Track 2. But it is possible. Some people are doing cool. it out there. It's just a little bleeding edge right now. Sure. Yeah, keep, keep an eye on it. Now, we spotted you, you held up a moment ago um, a, a, a joystick, and I think you've got a new, new joystick controller that supports not only your own cameras, but other brands as well. Tell us a bit about this new controller you've got out. So this is the PTZ Optics Super Joy. And we're really excited about this joystick because not only does it work with PTZ Optics cameras, but it works with Bird Dog, it works with Sony, it works with Lumens. It really, we've built cool. it to be open to work with pretty much anybody's cameras. And not only that, but one of the things that I've never seen on a joystick before, this is really innovational, is we have these custom buttons that can do HTTP triggers, UDP, TCP. And so, for example, you can control vMix with cool, this joystick. Okay. You can control OBS. Yeah. You can control a TriCaster. And so, um, in a lot of scenarios, uh, I'll give you a very simple scenario. A lot of houses of worship uh, work with volunteers. And you've got one person doing the live streaming, and you've got one person doing the camera operations. But a lot of times, you know, volunteers change. You're not sure if you're going to have the same person operating the cameras each week. And you're done the Sunday live stream or the Saturday live stream. And all the PTZ cameras are left in all these different angles. And somebody's got to reset it up. Well, with the SuperJoy, we have, you can set up a <laughs> custom button to control up to seven yeah. cameras at once. So you can, so example one is just click the button and all the cameras are set back to a standard known location. Another use of that is you click custom button two and you can use that for scenes. So if you've got three or four PTZ cameras and you have four scenes, you can do quickly do scene changes with multiple cameras with a single click of a button. So we're very excited about this joystick. There's really yeah, nothing else there out there like it. And uh, we, we have an aggressive price point of $899 here in the United States. And uh, it's available uh, in the UK as well.
When you mentioned about um, the joystick can control vMix, does that effectively take the place of a Stream Deck, for example, in the in the uh, um, switching of, of vMix? Well, you know, it it, it really is. Uh, it's not quite a direct replacement because this truly is, you know, built to be a PTZ camera controller. So you've got the joystick, you have mm. the iris, the shutter speed, the slow zoom, the slow uh, focus, all of these mm. things that. Uh, to build that into a stream deck, I think, would be kind of difficult to do um, mm. with all the camera switching yeah. <laughs> and everything that's in this joystick. Yeah. It also has an HDMI output, by the way, so you can set this up. And it also supports NDI. I'm not sure if I mentioned. So if you're using NDI cameras, you can have yeah. an HDMI output and control all the cameras on your local area network or even around the world using UDP. But getting to your question about the stream deck, which I do love, and I have one here. Um, <laughs> the stream deck is great. Yeah. What this uh, can do is with the HTTP triggers, you can, you know, vMix has an open API for HTTP triggers. So you can set up a yeah. list, anything that you can do in vMix, you can use this joystick to automate that. So uh, what a lot of people are doing is controlling like those scene switching of four or five cameras with the click of a button, plus maybe an HTTP trigger that changes a scene or plays an outro video, for example. Without the joystick, you can obviously uh, still control the PTZ from within vMix, which I guess is what you're doing now, is it? Yeah, that's correct. So um, I've got a couple of different uh, PTZ cameras here in my studio, and we were just, I'm just clicking, you can kind of see me here, I'm just clicking a mouse. And to be honest, that is pretty popular. Um, that is, you know, really, really popular. Whether it's OBS, vMix, or Wirecast, it's built right into the software. Um, so it's very easy to just, people are already, if you're a producer, you're already looking at the screen. You've already got a keyboard and mouse. We've kind I think the majority of the market has kind of moved away from the hardware controller that costs $1,400 or $2,000 <laughs> and it's got a bunch of buttons. Yeah. Well, let's be honest. The, the industry yeah. has moved since then, right? It's a keyboard and mouse. So you can yeah. get your YouTube stream key. You can do all of that with vMix, OBS or Wirecast. So you're already there. So the pan, tilt, and zoom controls built into vMix. The issue that a lot of our customers run into is that they've only got the HD version of vMix or you know the basic HD version, which does not include pan, tilt, zoom control. In vMix specifically, yeah. you do need the 4K version. So we actually offer a free pan, tilt, and zoom software for Mac or PC that includes everything you would need to control it and bolt it onto uh, an application like OBS that doesn't have it built in natively. Cool. And so that kind of leads a little bit onto, onto your uh, sort of collaborations. You're, you're pretty open about um, you know, collaborating with, with other vendors. You, you, I think recently you hosted your own multi-vendor virtual event. D tell us a bit more about your approach to partnerships. Yeah, well, it's nice to be a PTZ camera manufacturer that really is super focused on, on that one thing, PTZ cameras and the robotics and the software engineering that goes into that. So when we approach vMix, Wirecast, Livestream Studio, Mimo Live, even the open source developers and the community supporting OBS, yeah. uh, we approach them and we say, "What we have one goal here, to integrate PTZ camera controls into your software. How can we make that experience easier? And th as I said, you know, a lot of people get like the joysticks, but I do think there's more people out there using the integrated software with their preferred system out there. And so we worked with vMix, actually. We, we, we've always had PTZ camera control since vMix 17. I believe it was vMix 17, right. which was really about four or five years ago. Uh, they, they introduced yeah. NDI and PTZ control at the NAB show uh, that April. And since then, we've added you know, more and more features. The two new ones in vMix 24 are focus control, uh, which is something I, I could show quickly. It, it's a really cool feature inside of vMix where you're able to control the focus of the camera. Um, so a lot okay. of times, you, know, you yeah, like yeah. to have it on automatic control. But if you're zooming into something and you really want it to be fine-tuned, you can see how it's fine-tuned on me now. And then let's say I wanted to show that yeah. USB, you know, plug right here. So if you have, or now I have, you know, the books behind me over here, um, vMix allows you yeah. to do these fine-tuned controls. The other big one that we uh, announced with vMix 
is an important one actually, and it's uh it's tally light control for virtual PTZ cameras. So yeah. VMix has supported tally lights for a long time, but when you're using VMix with uh, PTZ uh, presets, basically you create new inputs each time. So you zoom your PTZ camera yeah. in, you create an input. You zoom your camera in another place, you create an input. Each one of those inputs now supports the tally lights. So because if you've got one PTZ camera, in fact, I could show you here, we've got one PTZ camera right up here, or sorry, two PTZ cameras, but only one tally light. Yeah. Because basically the talent yeah. knows just look in that general direction. There's, we don't need to put two there. Yeah. Um, and so VMix now has a, if you look at it, it's got a new tally light checkbox uh, built for PTZ cameras that we've been working on with them. So Paul, you're well-established and well-known in the States. Where can people um, this side of the Atlantic, uh, UK and Europe, um, find out more about you? So we have a lot of different distribution partners in the UK, including Exertus, uh, North Ambridge, and uh, MVDE, which is Mobile Video Devices Europe. So those are our three big distributors in the United Kingdom and Europe that uh, have demo units that are able to set up conference calls and um, we're really looking forward to, they've been very successful. They've been meeting with a lot of dealers, training folks out there. And uh, we're really uh, excited about working and becoming mm. better known with the help of Kit Plus and some <laughs> others because uh, yeah. it's, it's, we have a great product. And I think a lot of folks in the UK uh, are our customers and we're hoping to, to increase our presence there. So great. Have you, I mean, is there anything we should be looking out for in? maybe the next 12 months, what's coming up? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, there's a few things I can't talk about, but keep your eye on PTZ Optics in April. We have some new firmware coming out with some big announcements that are going to shake up the video production industry. So hopefully I'll be able to come cool. back in April or May and we can talk about some of that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll make sure we invite you back in and we'll get used to calling it uh, PTZ Optics by then instead of PTZ Optics. <laughs> and thanks, Paul, for coming in today. And thanks, as always, to Media Proxy for their ongoing support of Kit Plus TV. Check out their website at mediaproxy.com. See you next time.